So let me give you a concrete example. This is the simplest one I could come up with that does something useful. Let's say that you wanted to make an MP3 player and you wanted to use GStreamer as your framework. And you can run this exact pipeline on a hawk board to try it out. So we will start with our pipeline, always has a source at the beginning on the left side, and then the data gets routed through the pipeline and ends up on a sync on the right side. In this case, I'm pulling the data from a file source, and here it has a element parameter called location, and we just use the location to specify the file name and path. So for instance, if we had a hard disk connected up to the SATA interface, on a hot board. In that case, we can pull the data off the hard disk using the file source. In this case, we're saying it's encoded as an MP3 music file. And from the pipeline point of view, on the source pad of the file source element. And that source pad gets connected to the sync pad of an element that's based on the MAD MP3 decoder. So that data for the MAD MP3 decoder gets piped into the MAD element, which does the decoding, and the PCM data, after it's been decoded from MP3, it is now audio data in a PCM format, is available on the MAD source pad, which the GStreamer framework connects to the also sync element, and in particular, it's sync pad. So the data gets routed into the also sync, and the also sync element interfaces with the also API in Linux to pass the data out the audio output hardware on the hot board. So if you were to use this pipeline, you would be able to decode music and hear it if you plug some headphones or speakers in the audio out jack on your hot board. This, this whole notion of a pipeline um, typically gets encoded, implemented as a portion of your Linux application that you're creating. But one of the really fun things about GStreamer is it allows you to try out your pipeline so you can tune all the parameters and get it really close to what you need before you start writing some software that actually implements the uh, GStreamer-based application. And this tool that we can use is called GST Launch, or GStreamer Launch, and you describe the pipeline in a similar way to how Unix describes a pipe at a, the command line. In Unix, you use the vertical bar symbol to separate elements of a pipe. In GStreamer, we use the exclamation point, which I typically call bang, and to separate the elements. So we have a GST launch, and we're saying the first element is going to be file source, and it has a parameter called location, which we're setting to music.mp3, and then we are going to pass it to the next element in the pipeline, which is the MAD element, and we're going to pass it to the element that finishes our pipeline, which is the also sync element. And to create a very simple MP3 player on your hawk board, you can run the GST launch command that I show on this slide. All right, let's look um, at what's really going on. In the case that I gave here, MAD is running on the ARM. The next slide will show how we can route that data through the digital signal processor slide is there's a lot involved with it. But from your perspective, there's only two pieces that we're really interested in. The first piece is the very top piece on the left-hand side, which is your ARM9 Linux application. So we have a Linux application. It's running on the ARM. And what we um, are typically going to do is that application is going to make some calls to set up GStreamer and then it's going to let GStreamer run. We have lots of example applications that can help you get started. If you are interested in writing your own algorithm that runs on the digital signal processor, then the other piece that's interesting in this diagram is um, closer to the lower right-hand side, which is called 
the iUniversal codec or iUni um, codec in the diagram. And that is where your DSP algorithm would be running in this overall diagram. So let's start again at the top and work our way through the diagram to see what's going on. We have a Linux application. It's making some conventional GStreamer calls. I want to create a pipeline. I want to create these elements. I want to tie these elements into the pipeline. And it's making these calls into the GStreamer library. When we say we're going to use the DMAI plugin, that causes um, the TI hardware accelerated plugin to be used. And the interface that it's using is the DaVinci Multimedia application interface. And that has a standard way of supporting audio, video, display, and also um, hard, other hardware acceleration for moving data around, like using DMAI, or excuse me, using a DM, DMA. In the case of the DMAI plugin, you can also directly use the iUniversal API that's within what's called the codec engine. And this is what is routing the data in a simple way to your algorithm running on the DSP. So that uses DSP link to pass ownership of buffers to the digital signal processor. Typically, data copies are not involved at this point. We're just passing ownership of buffers using pointers, and that allows for a high-performance solution. Then that crosses the boundary from the ARM to the DSP. Uh, there's a little piece of DSP link running on the C67, which uses DSP BIOS to be able to pass it to what we call framework components, which just mean that they comply with some rules and an interface so you can have multiple codecs running on the DSP and are independent of each other. So, for example, if you were uh, sampling some data and you also were sampling audio at the same time, let's say you were trying to detect vibrations and you were also um, recording the ambient sound in the background, you could simultaneously be using an audio encoding element and your specific uh, universal codec. They can share the DSP. Neither one knows about the other, and they operate independently, and this framework makes that easy for you to be able to do. And then, of course, your iUniversal algorithm that's running on the DSP can directly use the hardware accelerators that are available to the C67 as well. And so this is, the, this is a diagram that's showing the entire um, components that are involved to route data from your application using GStreamer through the DSP and back to your application. Next slide, please, Lori. So if you want to create an algorithm or you have an algorithm and you say, wow, this sounds really interesting, how am I going to make my algorithm work in this framework? Well, there are guidelines that TI provides for being able to play nicely with the codec engine, and these are the um, XDAIS and the ability to build using the XDC um, tool set. And there, this used to be uh, quite challenging to get um, working well, but TI made it dramatically easier when they came up with the iUniversal standard. So you follow the rules for iUniversal, and that means that your algorithm will be able to play nicely on the DSP side with other algorithms. This is useful, so if you have two or three algorithms that are independent of each other, you're sampling data from lots of sensors, and each one needs its own custom DSP processing, you can implement those algorithms independent of each other by following the iUniversal standard, and then the system will take care of running the right application on the right DSP algorithm on the correct um, data. So it solves all the data and DSP sharing that needs to be done. On the ARM side, what's happening is we need to load the DSP with what we call the codec server. That's the bundle of all the algorithms that can be run on the DSP and get that loaded into the DSP. If your algorithm uh, perhaps has part of it is a FIR filter, 
you might want to be able to have um, the FIR filter coefficients to be settable um, when you load your algorithm. You can do that. Um, there's a mechanism for being able to set uh, one-time parameters uh, before you start using your algorithm on the ARM side. You can be able to set the DSP algorithm um, parameters like FIR coefficients. And then as you um, as the data is running, the ARM side will route the data through the DSP and get it back again. And in addition, you also have pipeline control. You can pause and play the pipeline. You can reset the pipeline. You can monitor for events that are happening on your pipeline. These events can be happening in the DSP, and they're um, easy to get to on the ARM side using the framework that we're talking about. And then you might also have um, dynamic parameters. Uh, so for instance, if you're processing audio data, you might have a volume or an echo or a feedback or something like that. And on the ARM side, your Linux app interface, which allows them to say, hey, turn the volume up. And uh, using this GStreamer framework, we can pass the new setting down to your algorithm that's running on the DSP. So getting both the initial configuration and the runtime changeable configuration set can be done from the Linux application with your algorithm that's running on the DSP. That can be a really challenging problem to solve in other environments. Next slide. So let me give you a real example. Um, as part of some work we did, which we called Show Off, and it is a project that's on SourceForge. So if you go to SourceForge and search for Show Off, um, there's an SVN repository with all of the software that I'm talking about available now. Uh, Show Off is specifically to designed to run on an OMAP L138 like you have on a Hawk board. So you can um, get a real world working example of what I'm talking about in this presentation. So when we started working on Show Off, which is a platform for being able to do demonstrations on um, embedded devices using the QT graphical user interface, one of the things that we needed to do was convert from the video color space to the RGB color space that's used for the display on some of the L OMAP L138 um, devices. In the case of the Hawk board, we have the VGA out connector, and the color space that we use for the frame buffer is RGB. So for show off, we wanted to be able to um, display movies and have them show up, for example, on the VGA output. So we needed to have an ability to convert from the color space that's used for the video. When we first implemented this, we did an arm side color space conversion. And the reason we did an arm side color space conversion is because all of those elements and plugins that are available on GStreamer, one of them already existed, so we simply had to put it in our pipeline and try it out and verify we were able to play videos correctly. But when we did that, the uh, performance wasn't very good because the DSP was mostly sitting idle and the arm was working way too hard in this case. So we needed to balance the load between the arm and the C67 DSP. So there is some other technology coming out that makes it easy, easy to develop DSP algorithms used, which is called C67 Accelerate, excuse me, C6 Accelerate. And that framework was used to create the color space conversion algorithm. Then we bundled the color space conversion algorithm with um, the readily available C64 audio and video codec server that you can get from the TI website. Putting those two together allows us to decode the audio on the DSP, the video on the DSP, and do the color space conversion on the DSP. 